Muslim does is nothing new. It's something in his own holy book. Taking of the shoes. As you enter the mosque, it's the first take of your shoes. So why do you take of your shoes? I'm telling them that in honor of the commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. When he was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, according to the Bible, and he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes, from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So in respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. Kaifanusalli. Before we go in, I said we make ablution. There are three good reasons I can think of. Number one, purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice. And everybody says yes. Secondly, I said it serves certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing the person for prayer. I'm washing not because I'm dirty, because I'm going to stand before my Lord. Mentally is preparing me for prayer. Thirdly, I said this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses in the book of Exodus. That is the second book of the Bible. It is written, And Moses and Aaron and the sons washed their hands and their feet thereat when they went into the tent of the congregation, the place of prayer. They washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslims are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. In our Salat, we stand up and ruku and sujood. And when you go into the sujood, this is what they're laughing at. Kaifa nusalli. How do you pray with heads down and bumps up? I'm telling them, I said, that is how your Jesus prayed. Your Lord, your God, that is how he prayed. And every prophet in the Bible prayed like that. And I quote you. It says, and Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, we read that towards his last days on earth, Jesus Christ, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he said, wait and watch. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. What did he do? He said, wait and watch. Keep guard, because the Jews are after my life. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. I'm asking you, how does a man fall on his face and pray? If there is another way, teach us. We want to learn. Can a circus acrobat do any better than that? Tell us. But no, this is how your Lord prayed, your Jesus. But you have lost touch with it altogether. You don't know. So I'm just, we want to, you to go back to the teachings of your own prophets. Because if you go back, if you follow the example of Jesus, you will be a Muslim. Jesus was circumcised, you ought to be circumcised. Jesus never had the pig in his life, you should not touch the pork. And so on. Every aspect, we find that the Muslim is the closest to Jesus in his teachings as well as to the prophets of God. There's a question which is relevant here. Someone wants to know already how to become a Muslim. Yes. My, may I know what is the way to become a Muslim? And... Ignore the second part. It's difficult to decide. Yes. Perfect. It's also for you. Yes, I thought it was part. only me. <laughs> Very easy. You see, first thing, you get the right concept of God. Number one, you have the right concept of God. That your God Almighty, He is, as the Bible says, the God is spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in truth and in spirit, not in form, shape, or size. Because the most beautiful mental picture you create of God Almighty is a figment of your imagination, and you are not to worship your imagination. Right concept of God, that He is the one and only being who has a right to tell you what to do, what not to do. And he's not like a man, he's not like a monkey, he's not like an elephant, he's not like a snake. Got it right? Anything you think or imagine is not him. Laysa kamisli hishai. Not only there's nothing like him, but nothing is like the likeness of him that can be imagined. Got it right? This is right. And you believe that Muhammad is the messenger of God. He's a true prophet of God. So whatever he tells you, you accept, because it's God speaking through him. He says, don't drink alcohol. Stop it. Don't argue. He said, don't eat the pig. Don't argue. Don't be promiscuous. Don't argue. Whatever he tells you, you accept. You are a Muslim. The others are all details. Once you accept that, that there is but one God and Muhammad is his messenger, the rest is detail. So that is the way you accept Islam. 
Thank you very much, Rick. There is a gentleman who has been waiting quite patiently. And I think um, also we need to move rather promptly for the further questions. Can you please advance? Uh, I am a, a Christian by name, a Muslim maybe by heart, because I want to, uh, I want to know or about this Surah Bakara verse 62. It is it, uh, about you are a believer of the, Jew, uh, the Quran, you are a believer of the Jewish scripture, a Christian or a Sabians. You do good work and believe in the last judgment. You have the gift from your Lord. So there are four religions there mentioned. What is the true religion? Is this true religion stated there in the book of the Christian Bible, James 1, 27? You can read there in the Bible because I have no Bible here in Saudi Arabia. You are also giving me quite a big task. <laughs> Let me see the, the Quranic verse that you mentioned. It looks like you have read it. Beautiful. I'm very happy. That means you must have got the Quran at home. At the moment, you don't know where you are. He says he's a Christian and a Muslim at heart. He can't be fish and fowl at the same time. You know, this is not religion. Either you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. You can't be fish and fowl at the same time. But he wants to be safe. Like that old lady, she was burning candles for St. Peter and for the devil. The old lady, she wants to make sure she's burning a candle for St. Peter, that when she goes on the other side, if St. Peter is there, uh, she's got, can intercede for her. He says, you see, look, I used to burn candles for you. And suppose St. Peter is not there. If the devil is in charge, then what? So she burns a candle for the devil as well. So in case the devil is there, so look, I burned a candle for you as well. So, you know, I'm a Muslim in the heart, and maybe I'm a Christian. I don't know what I am. Maybe fish and fowl. However, let's see what our brother is trying to ask. It says here, Inna lazina amanu, wal lazina hadu wal nasara, wal sabi'ina, man amana billahi, man amana billahi, wal yawmil akhiri, wa amila salihan, falahum ajruhum inda rabbihim, what is the problem? Allah is telling us whether you are a Jew or a Christian or a Sabin or whatever, if you believe in Allah, I just told somebody just now. You remember how to become a Muslim? Number one, you believe in Allah. What does it mean, believe in Allah? It's a very easy thing, I believe. What do you mean you believe? He tells you, don't eat the pig. And he said, look, I can't do without pork chops. You believe in Allah? He says, be circumcised. God entered into an eternal covenant with the Jews and those who accept the scripture, the Bible, that you must be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, every male child. Your Lord Jesus was circumcised and you are not circumcised. What kind of religion are you? He said, Jesus said, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Are you following him? He circumcised, you're not circumcised. He didn't eat the pig, you eat the pig. Well, in which way are you following him? At every step, he said, you must not look upon a woman to lust after her. And you have dancing parties by the millions. Am I correct, sir? In Western Christendom, every nation, every religious group seems to be dancing with other people's wives and daughters. They preach on Sunday a beautiful sermon, thou shalt not look upon a woman to lust. As soon as it's finished, he goes and dances with the people's wives and daughters. In which way are you, f he fasted. Are you fasting? You make a mockery of the whole thing. So when you say you believe in Allah, 